Music Matters, Araya. Hello. Hey, what's up? I'm doing well, man. How you doing? I'm pretty good. Pretty good. Thank y'all for coming through. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. Dude, appreciate dude, it. I appreciate you coming on the show. I appreciate it. I was saying it's been a minute since I've been in Vallejo and did an interview. It's been like <laughs> it's been like all city recently. Yeah? What was, yeah. The, what was the last spot you were at? Uh, oh, this is actually a funny story that kind of ties into Vallejo. Yeah. So it was on a street called Vallejo Street in the city. Ah, yeah, but yeah. I thought that it was in Vallejo. So I drove to Vallejo. This was a couple days ago. I was in Mateo. I drove to Vallejo. And I was oh, like, oh, yeah, we're here. And they're like, oh. <laughs> Vallejo <laughs> Street, like in the city. I was like, not Vallejo Street in Vallejo. Like any street in Vallejo. <laughs> well, no, no, no. But but it was Vallejo Street in Vallejo. Like I feel like that shouldn't be a thing. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. Right. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Okay. So what happened? <laughs> uh, we drove to the city. Oh God, that sucks. Yeah, it was annoying. It was super annoying. But it was also like like. I, I, I don't know. I was thinking about it. Like, there's no why. Why is there a street called Vallejo Street in Vallejo? Like, there's no way there's a San Francisco Street in San Francisco, or like a Concord Street in Con- actually in Concord there is. There's Concord Boulevard in yeah. Concord. So, <laughs> yeah. so you just proved your point. So I did prove nice, my point. I guess. Nice, nice, yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's nice to be redundant. I guess. I don't know. It's too redundant. It's yeah. <laughs> are Are you yeah. from Vallejo originally? I'm from South San Francisco, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you grew up yeah. out there? Yes. Yeah. 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 So South San Francisco is just more of like a suburb of yeah. just like south of San Francisco. Um, but it's really close to Daly City, right? Daly City. That's actually where I was born. Mm. So Okay, cool. You could probably imagine with all the Filipinos running around over there. Yeah, Daly, Daly City has like a like just South SF in general has a big like Filipino population, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, I have a I I have I have a, a bunch of fr- I have one friend that like all of his family lives out there and he's Filipino. But I mean, yeah. There, there's, there's like a funny disconnect. I feel like from Daly City and San Francisco, it's like there's, they're kind of different culture oh, yeah. wise, which oh, is yeah. weird since they border each other. Yeah, I mean, you, I feel like you'll get that in a lot of cities too, where just like mm-hmm. different pockets. You know, I, I guess like as opposed to like if you take Oakland for example, well, before it's getting all gentrified. And all yeah, that stuff, right? <laughs> but like take a look at where Piedmont is. Oh yeah, yeah, and if you've been through there, like compared to like, you know. Parts of Oakland, yeah. it's so, so different. Or Berkeley. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it kind of just, like, depends on where the people are at. They kind of dictate, like, what the cultural mm-hmm. thing is happening in those pockets. Yeah, uh, it's weird. It, it's it's funny for me to think about, like, a lot of, like, the historic ways that, like, people of, like, specific groups ended up in specific places. Yeah. Like, it's interesting, like, uh, Concord because of, like, the Native American tribes that, like, lived around Mount Diablo, Concord and Clayton has, like, a big Native American population, which is kind of interesting to me. Like, you wouldn't think that, you know, that's so long ago, you wouldn't think that would bleed over to, like, modern day, but it does, which is really fascinating. Yeah, I mean, even just think of, like, all the the names of these locations. Mm -hmm. um, And it's not like they disappeared. (laughs) Yeah. But, but But yeah, it it is kind of cool to think about, like, just... You know, something as surface level as just, oh, hey, the city of Concord, you know, just the name itself. And then you you dive deeper into it and it's like, oh, there's all this like really yeah interesting history behind it. Of yeah, it's it fascinating. All that stuff. So it's really cool. When did you move to Vallejo out of, out of uh, South uh, South? So I, me and my family moved around a lot um, from South, South San Francisco. We moved to San Mateo for a little bit. And then from there we went to Vallejo and we moved <laughs> like six years ago. Yeah, about like six years ago. So kind of been here for a good amount of time. Okay, so, of time. so you said you're 26, right? Yes. I'm so 26. you spent like your, the majority of your childhood in the city. Yeah, yeah. South San Francisco specifically. I wouldn't say like the city. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a little different, yeah. It's, yeah, it's a little different. But yeah, um, spent most of my life South San Francisco. So whenever people ask me like where I'm from, that's what I usually say. I'm, I'm from South San Francisco. People get like uber specific about like the suburbs of the city. I feel like <laughs> like there's some people from the city who have, I've gotten the full arguments about like, oh, really? you can't call like Richmond District the city. You can't call like the Sunset the city. You can't call <laughs> like they're like super specific about it. That's so funny. I didn't I didn't know that. Yeah, they get really serious about it. Jeez. I don't get it. Yeah, I'm not from the city though. But, yeah, or even like like I think this is dumb though. Like there's people who will say like the East Bay isn't part of the Bay, and I. I don't agree with that because the way I think about it is I think anywhere that Bart goes is part of the Bay. 
Well, by that logic, then Vallejo isn't part of the bay, but I consider well, it to be part of the bay. I think Vallejo is part of the bay for sure. Yeah, but I guess I guess that is true. Yeah, but there, but Vallejo, but but Bart goes to Antioch, which is is that the closest Bart station to you, Antioch, or is it? Yeah, Pittsburgh. It would, be, it would actually be Concord. Oh, it would be Concord. Yeah, but you'd have to pass the bridge. And yeah. Stuff. But when it comes to, um, for me, you know, like, oh, would you consider the bay? I just think more of culturally as opposed to geographically. Hmm. Yeah. Like, I, <laughs> it's so weird. I have people, I had people I argue with who are from like Danville or something. I was just going to say that. <laughs> I was in Dublin, like, Danville, like Alamo. Castro Valley yeah. or something. <laughs> I, I, I was arguing with this person who's from uh, Lafayette. Yeah. Right. This saying like, oh, Valle- uh, where are you from? And I'm like, oh, like I live in live out in Vallejo. It's like, so which, like, when are you gonna come through to the actual part of the bay? And I was like, huh? what? They live in Lafayette, what? and they're gonna Do say you know, that? What? What the hell? Do you know who? You know who's from Vallejo? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, you you ever heard of him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so like, yeah, what? That, that's I, ridiculous. It's, so, it's weird. It's weird. So that's you, why I think it's more culturally. I think it's just more important than the actual like geographical locations. Yeah, I've never really thought about it that way, but I think I agree with you. I guess where where do you, I wonder where like the cultural lens of like the way people from the Bay Area act. I wonder where that like starts and ends because I, I would think like north it probably ends at like or or uh, south. I think it probably ends at San Jose. And that's what I'm thinking. And yeah, then San I Jose. think north though. Where would Maybe, it, like cause Vallejo Fairfield? I I I, I, I think so. Yeah, I would say because there's no way I call like like Davis the Bay. Like, there's, <laughs> or, like I would never like this or like Sac. Like there's yeah. no way. Yeah. Like they're, they're very different. They're, yeah, completely different. I actually had a show. Um, well, I was part of the Davis Cherry Blossom Festival. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, so I was out in Div- Davis and I was like doing you know just songs and all that stuff and. Um, I mean, not that it's indicative of like, oh, you're from the Bay or get it or whatever. But I, I, I remember doing like a very Bay Area song. Yeah. Like very <laughs> like performing that. And then there was only like one or two people that actually like you could see like if you were watching it from my perspective, like, oh, OK, they, they definitely know yeah. what's up. Like in terms of just like Bay Area culture. So kind of like you said, like Davis is just completely different. Um, that's super interesting. Yeah. Sack is yeah, definitely different. Yeah, even different from Davis. <laughs> yeah. I love Davis though. I think Davis yeah. is so cool. Like uh, Ian Parrish. This is the fifth interview that Ian Parrish has interrupted. Shout out Ian. He he's <laughs> he, he's he's our head writer. I don't I don't know why, but he always calls me during interviews. Like that's, that's literally the fifth I, it's like, that's like the fifth yeah, he's great timing. Yeah. And honestly it's terrible timing, but yeah. uh He's no. a head writer, you said? Yeah, he's the yeah, head he writer. He wrote for that the site. into the the script or something, right? The the what? He wrote that into the script. Oh, like, probably. Just you. Yeah. Probably. He was like, like, and this is my my cameo yeah. right here. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta make my presence. No, he's he lives in St. Louis, Missouri. Yeah. What? Yeah. Okay. So so <laughs> I met him literally when Above the Bridge was just an Instagram account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, he just was like a fan. Actually, it's funny how I met him. So like one of the big things when it was just an Instagram account where it was just me and I would just like, review music. Yeah. It was like, um, I, uh, people would like send in their stuff and I'd review it, which I now don't really like the idea of at all because mm. I feel like I'm not really entitled to give anybody else opinions on their mm. music. Because, yeah, I feel like I was arrogant when I was younger. But any, anyway, like, so his band... I don't know how they found the Instagram, no. but they like sent in their music and they were like, Oh, can you like, we give your opinion on this. So I like wrote a little review or whatever. I didn't like it. I give it like a five out of 10. And that was how, and he was the drummer for that band. And yeah, that yeah. was how we met. It was me shitting on his band. <laughs> yeah. So what did he say after that? Did he say anything? He, 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 no, but that's the funny part. He was like, you know, this is a very like well articulated critique of what's wrong with our <laughs> band and, the, and, the, and the, the points of weakness that we currently have. And I was like, who the fuck is this guy? And then, <laughs> he said, hey, you're right. Yeah. I like you. <laughs> yeah. He, he was like, you know what? You're totally right. This is garbage. And then... <laughs> <laughs> and then we uh, we just started talking, and then we just like it's, it's, it, like remained in touch. And a couple months later, he was like, you know, like I'd love to like start trying to write. And I was like, oh yeah, like for right. sure. So yeah. I was like, then we just started talking. I was like, where are you from? He's like, St. Louis. I didn't even know that at the time. I kind of assumed he was from here. Yeah. And um, 
we just grew like we grew a friendship and it was just like and sick. yeah and he just like that was that was when we were just an Instagram account and then he just texted me give me a call when you get a chance <laughs> I'm in an interview <laughs> talking have you met about him? you right now have you met uh, yes yeah. yeah so so I flew to St. Louis Damn. um four months ago right Four months ago, yeah, I think four months ago. And that was when we met in person for the first time, which is really strange because he was like one of my best friends, I felt like, for the past like four years yeah, yeah. talking. It was bizarre. And then, um, so yeah, I met him and then he flew out for our show last week oh, that nice. PG&E canceled. Um, <laughs> but but, but, but he, he, he flew out for that. So that was the second time I met him. And then we're lucky enough that he's actually coming back out for the rescheduled Damn. show. Damn. Yeah, commitment. No, that's a real one right there. Love the kid, yeah. yeah. But yeah, Davis is like, <laughs> back to Davis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Davis. I think it's like, it, it doesn't feel like the Bay, and that's almost what I kind of like about it, I feel like. It, it almost has like its own little thing going on. Yeah. It's, it's, nice. it's a cool little town. I think it's if nice. I ever went to school again, I might try to go there. Yeah? That'd be cool. Davis is cool. I've, I've like visited there a handful of times. It's just... It's so nice. You get to see a bunch of cows and stuff. And yeah. Then, I don't know. It's chill. <laughs> I think the smell is overhyped. Everybody says it smells really bad. I don't think it smells that bad. I don't think it's that bad. Yeah, I don't think it's that bad at yeah. all. I think it's like, I don't know. I think it's worse when you see, when you're like go on road trips and then you see like yeah. the cows and stuff. I feel like. That's way that, worse. Yeah. Like on highway, uh, what is it? It's, it's. What is the highway that you can take all the way to LA? I always forget. Five? What, five. Yeah. yeah highway five. five. Yeah. That's way worse. I feel like the five is, yeah. Way worse. Yeah. I don't know why. Maybe it's the grass over there. <laughs> yeah, probably. How was a uh, Cherry Blossom Festival? Was that the first festival you played? Yeah. So the cool thing about the uh, Davis Cherry Blossom Festival is that, um, so that was my first time, it was this year, that was my first time actually performing in person for the Davis Cherry Blossom Festival. Oh, because they had I the was, virtual one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I think it was 2020. Yeah, it was 2020 where I got invited um, <clears throat> through... Isaiah, mm. that you've interviewed before. Shout out mm-hmm. to Isaiah. Love um, that guy. Shout out Isaiah. He's so cool. He's um, the best. Yeah, so he he okay. hooked me up with like people at like the Davis Cherry Blossom Festival, and then you know the uh, global pandemic happened, <laughs> and so every year since I've just been doing virtual. So this year has been nice to do something like in person. Yeah, it was so dope. I know a lot of people that put that festival. It seems like they're really good about having acts back, right? Yeah, they're very good. That's pretty awesome. They're very good about it. Is it through the school? Like, is it related to the school at all, or is it like a who, who organizes it? I, the I, it's not. It kind of is through the school. But yeah, it's, I, I feel like the the that part kind of like acts more like a third party as opposed to like directly mm-hmm. for Davis. I don't really know the full details of anything. I the only thing I know is like they're sponsored by the Sudworks Brewery, which is where it, it was took out place. there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But other than that, um, I mean they're they're pretty good about like they have students from Davis who like perform and like run a lot oh, of the cool. stuff, but I don't think it's directly like a thing from Davis. I feel like when you have a small town like that yeah. with a college in it. And in some way, shape, or form, everything the town does is somewhat related to the college. Yeah, in yeah. a weird way. I mean, that's uh, Davis is a college town, so <laughs> that's really because that's that's like literally like quite that that's like all that's there. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. like Chico. Like Chico has the school <clears throat> and like the, nothing else. Well, yeah. I mean, what else is out there in Chico? <laughs> yeah, it's it's like a, well, I mean, Davis did the same thing down there. Yeah, it's like yeah, yeah, NorCal, yeah. middle of nowhere. NorCal has like a. I feel like people outside of Northern California don't even know that Northern California exists. You, you know what I mean? Like, because think oh, about it. Like, think about like LA or something. Yeah, like, like San you, Diego. Exactly. Like yeah. when you think of California, people from other states, I would imagine they're like, oh, you know, there's like San Francisco and like the Bay Area. Yeah. And then there's like LA and stuff. And and I would assume that they're almost like, okay, that's it. But then like, <laughs> <laughs> like I feel like nobody from out of town, Northern California knows anything about Northern California. Like Davis? Who's that? Like, yeah, Davis. <laughs> Mount Davis? Yeah. Like the, the Raider Stadium? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's like Sacramento. That's the capital. Yeah. I know that. I said fifth grade history. Yeah. 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 And then there's like Northern, Northern California. Yeah. With like, I don't think even I know. I don't. I don't even know. I, I, I bar- yeah, I barely know. Well, like Eureka or something? Yeah. Wasn't Eureka or like. Or, or, or what do they call it? It's like a um, um, uh, humble. The, the, yeah, but there's, it's like what do they call that? It's a the state of Jefferson. Weren't they trying to like secede from like the state of California? I only went up to fifth grade history. And yeah, because uh, I, th- I think like 
my understanding is like there, there's like a weird divide in Northern California, and at some point it gets like super conservative, and then like I think that's like the state of Jefferson, and like Eureka and everything up there. Yeah, I mean, I I could I could definitely see that. Yeah, like uh, that's where like Arnold and stuff is, I think, right? Or no, well, that's more like Tahoe, I guess. Is that is Arnold in Nevada? I'm not no, sure. it's in California. Oh, yeah. See, I, I don't even know. Anything yeah, about. yeah, it's weird. <laughs> anything above like SAC, I'm just like, ah. Yeah, okay. everything else. That's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> was that the first festival you played? Yeah, that was like the first. Well, yeah, I actually did the um this thing called like Rock the School Bells. That was in Sounds familiar. South. It's not Rock the Bells, which is a different thing, but uh-huh. it was like a Rock the School Bells, which is kind of like a student run uh, festival out in. Uh, if you ever heard of like Skyline College and like in Oakland, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, in it's it's in South San Francisco. Oh, is it or like Daly City? Or yeah. there's a Skyline High School in Oakland. Yeah, right? you're probably thinking about that. That's yeah, what I'm yeah. thinking of. Um, that was like my first one when you just like get a bunch of like acts just going on at once. But this one's like my first real one. I like to say because mm-hmm. back then I was just like, oh, this is cool to do. But here it was more I actively wanted to be part uh, of a festival, so it was a really really cool experience um you know because like everyone's just kind of just going like boom 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 like artists 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 yeah. artists back and forth and stuff and then you know at the same time you're you're trying to like get to know people but like everyone's just like moving everywhere mm-hmm. um the chaos is really fun <laughs> for me personally like i i love that stuff where like everything's chaotic i get but that for me i'm kind of just ah cool i can just ride underneath it and i get that worry about it I, yeah. I think I'm like that too, but I don't love it in the moment. I love it after. You know what mm. I mean? Like, like I think, like, we, we talk about this, like, me and the team talk about this all the time. Like, you know, like, going to people and doing interviews where people are, yeah. it's a hassle. Like, it's a pain in the ass. Like, it, it makes the process so much harder. But it's like, I almost feel like when we get a studio, when we get a studio, we'll miss the craziness of it, you mm. know? Because, like, there really is, like, some cool like level of like wow each interview is unique each yeah. one's in a different place like we yeah. did an interview a couple months ago yeah on top of a car on a random street and 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 like and uh somewhere in soma like just random somewhere fuck? south of mission yeah yo that's so dope yeah on top what? of my car yeah <laughs> it, it, yeah that comes out in like a couple of days so that'll be out but that's cool yeah but uh it's, it's like stuff like that like we've done interviews in parks like we've done interviews and yeah. in, like i was saying more studios in the Bay Area than I knew there were, like, mm-hmm. random garages, like, bedrooms. It's, yeah. like, and that's part of what makes it interesting. It's part of what makes it, like, rewarding. But yeah. it's, it, but then again, it's really hard. Like, like oh, yeah. to be honest, oh, like, yeah. to make it work. And, like, it's, like, I know when we get a studio, it'll be so streamlined. Because yeah. the thing is, like, think about it. Like, like when we, most of our, most of our interviews are in the city. And we live 35 minutes away from the city. So yeah. it's, like, there's a 35-minute drive there. 35 minute drive back. So we got like a, like a 70 minute commute. And then we have like generally like 30 minutes of setup. So that, that, so that's like another hour. Yeah. So that's like two hours and 10 minutes. The interview takes like an hour, if not more. Mm -hmm. So like 90 more minutes. So it it, it ends up being like a five hour process, but the content you get from it is like an hour, Mm. which isn't that bad in exchange rate, but it's like, it could be so much better. Yeah. Well, I mean, the the fact like if if you get like that space like the mm-hmm. cool thing about it is like it could just be the process of it can be streamlined because exactly. I, I was watching y'all set up and like y'all work fast right <laughs> but there's also like uh, a, a period of time where you have to like really look oh okay where can i set these lights up okay, yeah like, what, what would the best uh position be for the camera and all that stuff and i feel like if, if you have a space it's just okay cool i know exactly where everything's gonna be exactly so I think that will like cut down on time. And if anything, I feel, I feel, I don't know, people like consistency for sure. Know? So it, it's, it might just be more playing that way. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do this stuff. You do. <laughs> it, is this the first interview you've ever done? Ever no, done? not really. Uh, I've done like a couple interviews before, but like it's so f- far and few be- in between. So I, I, yeah, I don't really do op- interviews too often. Cool. Well, it's so an it's honor. Nice. <laughs> so the way we met was you know it's funny it's like i knew of your stuff like before i saw you a brick and mortar because i went to a show that uh, eli set up shout out eli he's the best but um yeah so i knew of your stuff 
just because I think like I'd like seen you in like comment sections of people I oh. know and stuff, and like you're just one of those guys that kind of like is everywhere. Like there's people who I'm just like, oh, like I like I've seen them in different places and shit. Yeah. But I didn't even know you were playing that show. So so so, so then I you know I saw you live. You had great energy. I was super impressed. I was Thank like, you. yeah, Thank of course, you. man. But I was like, wow, like that's dope. So we talked after and uh, you know, we exchanged numbers. Like yeah, let's set this up. But that was a funny like way to meet somebody. But have you played live a bunch? Like do you have a lot of experience playing live? Like it's, it certainly seems like you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, yeah, we we're kind of talking. It's kind of funny that you, uh, you mentioned it earlier, like before the the interview started, when you were asking like how old I was, mm-hmm. and it seemed like oh, just surprised. Yeah, I was surprised <laughs> like, you're twenty six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know you were saying like oh, like it seems like you've been doing this for a while. I've been yeah, I've been performing ever since I was like twelve. Jesus. Yeah, I've been performing ever since I was like twelve, and it, it you know. Not that it was like big shows or anything like that. But, yeah. Um, back in South San Francisco, they used to have open mics like everywhere and almost like at least every couple of weeks. So going to there and going to perform there was just always kind of just like the fun thing to do. Yeah, you know, of just, course. It was like, oh, hey, you want to go bowling? It's around like that same kind of thing. Like, oh, you want to go bowling? Oh, you want to go to an open mic? <laughs> <laughs> That's then, crazy, though. Yeah. So yeah. you were 12 years old doing that? Yeah. Uh, most of the time I was actually like playing for other people. Like I was playing oh, okay. like guitar and other stuff. And it wasn't until like, a couple of years later, I guess, I was like, okay, I want to do this for, for me. And so I started like taking it a lot more seriously. So you, so you weren't making like stuff under the name Araya for like most of the time you were doing music? Araya is like a really, really, really new name. <laughs> is it? Okay. Yeah. I've only been going, performing under Araya um, for under, actually just the past two, the past year or so. Wow. Okay. Yeah, were you putting out stuff under a different name before? Yeah. I had like a ton of names I was going through and uh-huh. it just, yeah, it just wasn't, um, it just didn't feel right. Okay. You know what I mean, like, I don't, I don't know if like other artists that you've interviewed like ever had any issues with the names that they would go under. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I'm terrible with names. Yeah. And it's I, I'm very picky about like how I want everything to be. Um, I'm actually very meticulous when it comes to like my creative process. Mm-hmm. So when it doesn't feel right, it just like doesn't click. Um, so mm-hmm. Rye is always just kind of been here for like a couple of years, but. Otherwise, I've been performing under, like, different names forever now. <laughs> wow, okay. So if you started when you were 12, do you think that's where, like, like I guess I would ask you, do you get nervous before you go on now? I would imagine it's kind of limited because you've been for- performing for so long. It, I mean, no, not really. Not. If anything, like, I I get a little bit nervous, uh-huh. right? Just because, like, usually I'm just like, okay, I, I know exactly what it takes to get here, what it uh, takes to perform at the level that I want to. Um, but I really only get nervous like right before I go on. Mm. It's just like it. That's when it hits for me. And it's just oh, oh, okay. For me, it, it it's like a it becomes a familiar feeling. It's like, oh, yeah. okay. Like I remember what it feels like to to <laughs> have like stage fright or, or or something like that. And so um, when I do go on, right, um, it just dissipates. <laughs> That's interesting. I feel like that might, like to me, that's always kind of been the mark between like somebody who makes music and then has to perform it versus somebody who like is a performer. Because mm. I do feel like there's a different mark and I feel like you can become a performer based on performing, but it takes a long time. And mm. I, I mean, it's, you've just put in those hours so much. Are there like, do you have any weird experiences like when you were younger? Like the kind of like you almost like fall back on and think like, okay, like I got through these performances. Now I can do this. Like kind of how's that progression gone as you've like grown as a performer? Um, I used to forget lyrics a lot. Hmm. I used to forget lyrics a lot. So what I what I started doing uh, in those moments, um, I would just kind of just start to improvise. Hmm. So usually what I started off doing with performances was just covers and stuff. So, yeah. Um, and I would perform like medleys and all that stuff. And, uh, sorry, is it cool? Like we could just pause for a second. Oh, we're back. Um, so growing up in the city, playing all those shows and stuff, you probably played like a bunch of venues in the city, right? 
Uh, actually, or, or were they yeah, like really. more like smaller shows? And it was stuff? more just like smaller stuff. I actually did a lot of uh, busking. A lot of what? <laughs> busking. What's that? I don't know if you heard that before? But it's like you pretty much go to a random ass spot, like whether it's like in the city or like in a subway or or, or like the Bart or mm-hmm. all that stuff, and then you just perform. Have you seen like? Yeah, I, yeah. I, you know, I've been on bar and stuff and seen like yeah, people yeah. performing and stuff, but Not I didn't know how to. The train, I didn't know what like, to name on like the platforms and stuff. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So whoa, so you do so that's crazy. So what kind of started you, or made you want to start doing that? Like, did you like so you would literally just like go you and your guitar and just go out somewhere random in the city and just play? Like, would you yeah. have like a tip jar out and stuff? Yeah, no, yeah, all that's of that, so cool. All of that stuff. So I, <laughs> I started doing that in high school because like mm-hmm. one, I, I like wanted to start exploring the city on my own right because usually i just like oh my parents would just take me and stuff but like, yeah i wanted to see how far i could get by myself and then uh eventually i saw like other people like busking and stuff and i was like i could i could do that that yeah. seems like fun and so i started doing that uh, a lot more and i realized um it, it, it helped me a lot in my performances mm. in the sense that because when you're busking right like, even when you're, like, what, you're going on BART or something, the last thing you want to do is, like, pay attention to someone else, <laughs> yeah. right? Because why are you at BART? Like, yeah. Because you need to go somewhere else. Because you have to be at BART, yeah. Yeah, because you have to be at BART. You have to go somewhere, you know, like, you don't go there, like, oh, I think I want to see someone play some music today. <laughs> yeah. So, because of that, it really helped me out um, in finding what people, what gets people's attention. Huh, that's uh, actually fascinating. Yeah. So like even like with like covers that I would do and stuff. Yeah. Like there'd be stuff that I have learned from busking that I would implement into my own performances. And like like what kinds of stuff? Just like stuff like almost like stage work stage, type yeah, stuff. Sta- yeah, stage work. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Like crowd work type stuff. Yeah, crowd work. So a lot a lot of my songs now um, when I like perform, I always have to do something where. I have like a section for myself to get the crowd going yeah, or to get the crowd engaged in some sort. Um, I guess like as an example, like the show that you were at, that Uh you saw, um, I would, it wouldn't, it's different in a venue where like you could perform your own original stuff. Like obviously on like a subway, no one really wants to hear your, like your original stuff. Yeah. But it's the same concept in that, um, I would just sing something and be like, okay, y'all sing it back. Right. Yeah. Uh, as soon as I get like the crowd's attention, right? Like, so at, at the brick and mortar show, cool. I have the crowd on my side. They're like hanging on every word that I'm saying. I'm going to do the thing where I like say something or I, I give them something to do. So that way they interact with the song. Mm-hmm. And that's what I learned from busking. I would mm. do like a really popular song or, uh, and you could, when you're, when you're, when you're performing, at least for me, I start scanning the room see who picks up on what huh and that oh okay i'm doing i'm doing this song right i'm doing i don't know i'm doing get you by Uh daniel caesar right i look instantly for anyone around my age that looks like they would like know that song yeah and then when they when i see them react to it you almost look look at them yeah like i kind of look at them like get engaged and i'm like Right, and instantly they'll start like mouthing me. Like, Ooh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Cause like uh, I don't know. I this is like pseudo psychology or whatever. Uh-huh. But you know, like when you when you make like eye contact with someone or something, like they tend to if if you make a good impression enough on them, they tend to like mimic what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. Know if you heard that before. No, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, There's a word for that, right? It's like a mim- mimicry, <laughs> flattery, so, so something like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's some it's some fancy schmancy word for. Uh-huh. It. Um, so I would do the same thing and it's usually, um, like now I'm talking about like when I'm doing my own music, like, and I'm looking at a crowd, mm-hmm. there's usually like, like, cause usually in a crowd, the people that are there, they don't come alone. Never. You're usually yeah. like with friends or something. So you always want to find the one friend that kind of like beckons like the other friends, like to do stuff. You That's I mean? so smart. That's so you. Wow. Yeah. So you kind of target them, not in a bad way. Yeah. Of you course. target them and just like, oh, get them going. Then they'll be like, 
oh hey y'all should come with me right yeah and that's so at the show i was at that was tj yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean i know tj yeah, too so that yeah, helps yeah <laughs> so i use that to my advantage and then yeah. like i would i would call out not call out in like in a bad way <laughs> yeah but i'll call out certain people and it's like oh yo shout out to this person all that stuff you know like especially because of how that wasn't small but it was intimate right it was mm-hmm. a fairly intimate uh night in terms of the, the audience like you want to get people involved you want people to yeah. feel like oh hey like this is cool like i wouldn't get this uh-huh. at a festival so i feel like those kinds of interactions are like will really make a memorable experience in terms of you know performances and all that stuff that's fascinating to me that you learn that from basking busking busking <laughs> i've never I, i'd never heard that term yeah yeah busking yeah, yeah. it's also illegal in some parts <laughs> busking yeah, yeah. Is it? Dude, yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. Maybe it's just because music's my life, but it's like whenever I see people like that in the city, I always stop and listen. Really? Like It's like, you know, I'm just like, I don't know. Like, it's interesting to me because yeah. it's like you, you quit. Because I mean, my whole thing, what I've dedicated to my life to like giving musicians a platform to tell their story. Yeah. It's like nothing fuels me than like hearing more than hearing musician stories. That's so, so dope. Yeah. Thanks, dude. Thank you. You don't, under, you don't understand how much that means to that person who's busking. Yeah, I hope so. Know? Thanks, bro. Like, you're really just trying to get the attention of just like someone, mm-hmm. even if just for a second. And you doing that for them, that like is so much more meaningful than, you know, you probably won't think about it too much. Yeah. It'll be just like, ah, cool tunes. <laughs> drop a drop a quarter or something. And then you're you got the rest of your day to go to. You yeah. Know what I mean, like for them, it's like, ah, cool. They're they, like, wow, someone cares. Yeah. And they cared enough to want to support me in some way. That's so cool. Yeah. That's got to be a pretty, yeah, I would imagine that'd be a pretty intimidating thing to go do, though. Like, when you're yeah. like, how old were you, 18, 19? I was like 16, 15, wow. 16. Wow. That's, yeah, yeah that's got to be an intimidating thing to do. Yeah. Did you know, like, from the moment you started making music that you wanted to do music, like, as a career? Or when did you, like, kind of cross that threshold into realizing, like, wow, okay, I'm going to do everything. I'm going to go out. I'm going to sing on the street. I'm going to put everything into this. I, I'm kind of a late bloomer in that sense. Uh-huh. Like I kind of just like always been doing music. Like, again, like I kind of just like thought of it as like, oh, let's go bowling. Let's go to the swimming pool. Or, let's go know. sing a song. Yeah, yeah, yeah just some casual, just whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and it wasn't until after I graduated high school, right? Because, you know, just like I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. But it wasn't until then, after I graduated, I was like, no, oh, this music thing is really fun. Yeah. This music thing is really cool. And I think... I think I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> yeah. Or at least like I know how to get really good at it. So hmm. that's kind of how it worked out for me. I think that's key what you just said. Like I know how to get really good at it. Yeah. That's something I think about a lot actually. Yeah. Because I think like picking your craft and then fully realizing how to be, how to like reach the pinnacle of your level in it. That's almost as important as actually doing it. Because yeah. a lot of people don't know how to, like, do that. And I feel like how you learn that is you just mess up a bunch. Yeah. Like, I kind of <laughs> feel the same way. Like, I, I don't feel like I'm anywhere near, like, the pinnacle of what I do. But I feel like I know how to get there. Yeah. Which is, like, something I'm eternally thankful for. Yeah. But it's, like, I think that's because I've messed up so many times. Oh, yeah. 100%. I mean, because you know what not to do. Mm, exactly, So yeah. it makes that path actually a lot clearer than if you were, exactly. I don't know, I guess, like, naturally talented at it. It's like, oh, I could do anything. But then that's like the ironic part in it is like, I could do anything. So exactly. Yeah. Now, what do I, what do I, where's the path I need to go if yeah. I can quote unquote do anything? It's like, um, where did I read this? I think, oh, I don't remember where I read this, but this, I read some book and they talked about this um, idea of, oh, I think it's a, I think it's a, the Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. I, I, I think it's that book. But uh, I think or it's, or it was some Gladwell book. But, yeah. but it talks about um, the idea that like it's far less likely for somebody who comes from riches to, to become rich. And I know that sounds mm. ironic, but it's simply mm. because he like what he explains is that like in his opinion, the idea of like acquiring mass amounts of wealth is the most the number one like factor mm. in that happening to you is mindset. And it's like people who are born into wealth very rarely possess the mindset to go and acquire wealth because they've been born into it. Mm. Whereas people who are born into either poverty or like middle class families or just, you know, not wealth, yeah, yeah. they know what it's like to not have that and then they have more of a drive to go and achieve it. So it's almost like the same thing as what we were just talking about. It's like, I don't know how, you know, I'm not there. Yeah. Because I don't have the natural talent. Yeah. So it's yeah, like, yeah. I, I, but I, that makes you want, that makes you want to get there more. Yeah. So it's almost like, 
you know, if somebody's born with like like what you were just saying, like innate talent and something, part of me thinks they can't even get as good at it as somebody who isn't born with the talent. So I, I'm actually like uh, I'm a music teacher mainly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of what I tell my students, I, I tell them this all the time, like, especially to my more, you know, my, my students who like just get it more than the other students. Yeah. I always tell them, um, you know, hard work beats talent when talent, talent doesn't, doesn't work. work hard. Yeah. Yeah. I live by that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. It's, yeah. And, and, and to, to what you were talking about too, the whole, uh, the, 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 of, of the Gladwell thing you were talking about. That's, I feel like that's because of, um, it's like, I guess, ignorance too. Yeah. In that way. Like, why, like, why would I want to get a, bu- a bunch of wealth? Like, I already have it. Like, exactly. You know what I mean, <laughs> so exactly. It, it's, it's just so cool how like that dichotomy works and just like the irony of it. You know, I, I feel like it's always that kind of like the grass is greener on the other side kind of mm. thing, you know? I used to live by that quote. Yeah. Like, uh, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Yeah. That, I think that is so true. Like, there's, I've said this before in interviews, I think, but I'm a sucker for, like, dumb, like, inspirational quotes that, like, white moms <laughs> would, like, put on their Pinterest. But, like, live, laugh, love. Live, laugh, love. Like, that type of shit. Because, like, so often it's true, though. Like, yeah. so many of those quotes are so true. Like, like the idea of, like, the golden rule. Like, treat people how you want, how you yeah. want to be treated. It's like, you know, it's like some dumb corny thing that like a white mom would like put on her Facebook page well, but it also is like incredibly true wouldn't you want that yeah, for you wouldn't of course. you want to do that you yeah. know what I mean <laughs> like I'm glad like my mom would say something like that yeah. because like I want to teach my kids something like that yeah. you know what I, I mean, mean they're, they're cliches for a reason exactly it's just the fact that like you know it, it's said all the time that again if you're so exposed to it I feel I feel like people get complacent about that mm-hmm. you know so it's like oh okay I'm tired I'm tired of hearing it <laughs> yeah um, it's almost like when like um there's like an artist and people who are like very big fans of the artist mm-hmm. don't like their most popular stuff mm-hmm. because of the fact that it's popular. Mm-hmm. But like you just said, like they're cliche for a reason. Yeah. Like people's most popular songs are popular for a reason. Yeah. And usually they're pretty good. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what's my favorite Sublime song? Uh, it's, it, it's probably Santa Maria. Yeah, yeah. It's probably Santa Maria. That's not to say, yeah, yeah, that's not to say I don't love a good ball and chain. Not that, not that <laughs> I don't love a good bad fish, but like Santa Maria is popular because it's a great song. Yeah. It's not because, and, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't, yeah. I think, I feel people are just trying to be different for no reason. Especially musically. I, yeah. Oh my musical god! Elitism. I hate. Oh my god! And I think the reason I hate it so much because that used to be me Gro- <laughs> g- growing up, for sure. No, like I, I don't we know. Love character development <laughs> over here. Let's go. <laughs> well, I don't know if you feel like this, but like I feel I find in life like the um, like the characteristics of people or like the people in general that tend to bother me the most mm. are people who I see like the worst parts of myself within. Mm. I don't know. If you, do, you, do you feel like that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think a lot of people. No, do. I, I, yeah, I feel that sometimes, mm-hmm. <laughs> especially to the, like that whole music elitism thing. Mm-hmm. I used to be like that too. It yeah, so bad. It's, it's awful. So bad. It is. <laughs> like I, like I literally was the kid in like middle school who'd like walk up to like little kids wearing like Nirvana shirts. I'd be like, "Wow, name what's your favorite Nirvana <laughs> song?" I'd be like, "I'd be like, have you ever listened to In Utero from front to back?" I doubt it. Like. <laughs> Oh, you like music? Yeah. Name all of the songs, dog. <laughs> Name all of the music right now. <laughs> What's your favorite music? <laughs> like, yeah, that dude, was literally me. Those people are the worst. They're, they're the worst, dude. Like, it's like people enjoy stuff. Yeah. You know? It's like, stop being an asshole. Yeah. I mean, the, the cool part about music is, 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 is such a huge, huge, vast library of just... Yeah so many different kinds of music mm-hmm. you know what i mean and it's like you don't know like yeah. people find music in the weirdest of ways mm-hmm. and they become endeared to that in the weirdest of ways so if someone's just like oh wow like i've never heard this nirvana song before <laughs> idiot I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like i want i want to you know or you know and it's like i want to be a nirvana fan and so like they'll get the shirt and like they'll like get into it and then Someone would be like, Ugh, well, you weren't there when <laughs> you weren't there when Kurt Cobain killed him. <laughs> yeah, we can, we can cut that 
I was literally in the room where Kurt Cobain was born. <laughs> Were you the show? <laughs> I was going to say so much. Oh. <laughs> I was gonna, never mind. <laughs> So we'll turn off these lights. It got really dark all of a sudden. <laughs> I'm li- I literally was Corgi Love's neighbor. Like, no. <laughs> you you don't like Nirvana no. as much as I do. But you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So people, people people get endeared to music in weird ways. Like you know what I mean? Like that's um, super true. Like I feel like for me, like a good example. Like I I heard. Daniel Caesar's Get You mm-hmm. at a fucking Togo's. Really? Yeah. Great song. Was, well, see, that that's funny you bring that up. Like, I have a, I have another, like, I have a similar experience with that song. Like, I yeah. didn't hear that song until I was, um, one of my good friends, Lance Redeker, shout out Lance. I used to play drums for him mm-hmm. and uh, at some gigs, and, like, he wanted to cover this song by Daniel Caesar, and I had never heard it, and then he played it for me, and I fell in love with the drum part. So I was like, oh, like, Damn. yeah, so it's, it's, it's like, same thing. Like, you know, there's certain songs, and, like, yeah those songs mean different things to different people. And that's one of the beautiful things about music. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. Like if, if someone came up to me, it's like, Oh, you like Daniels. He's just get you. Like, where were you yeah. when he was in like Canada or something? <laughs> it's like, dog, I was in a togo. I was ordering a sandwich. Like, what do you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like, I, I feel like I, as like the artist too, like I would much rather want people to get it from like wherever they can. Yeah. Like my music from wherever they can, as opposed to like, the more traditional routes of like mm. hearing whatever kind of music, you know what I mean? Like some people hear on the radio, some hear on like a Spotify playlist, yeah. some hear it from like a coffee shop or a Togo's. Like that, yeah. that's almost cool because they yeah. bring their own separate experiences yeah. to it. It's like, oh, I'm always going to associate this sandwich with Daniel Caesar. <laughs> with Daniel food. Caesar, yeah. <gasps> Daniel Caesar salad. Caesar sandwich. <laughs> Daniel Caesar salad? Daniel Caesar sandwich. No. Uh, I always talk right. about well, I'm going to associate that with, with the, the Caesar yeah. salad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's funny that you say music so like infinite because I think about that a lot. Yeah. I think about like well, like one thing I say all the time is like I've chosen to like dedicate my, my life to music, mm. but I still don't know anything about music. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I don't know anything about music at all. Mm. Like I, I've I've been an instrumentalist for eight years. I've been damn. yeah, I, I, I've been doing this for like four years now. But it's like I don't think I know anything about music, and that's how infinite it is. Mm. I think my level of mu- like musical knowledge, especially like even like on like a theoretical level and like a vocabulary level mm. and like a pop culture level, it's like it's so elementary. And I think ninety five percent of people's knowledge about music is is so elementary because it's so infinite. Yeah, like I probably know like one percent about about I probably know like one percent of what there is to know about music. <laughs> that's crazy to think about, actually. right? Yeah, when you put it like that, it, it is kind of wild to think about. I, I try to think about, too, is, like, the music industry and, like, the music community is actually really small. Yeah, very so much when so. You, when you put it in that way, just that, the reach of just this very, very small community of weirdos and all that stuff. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> yeah, literally, though. Just trying to do, like, the best they can with what they got. Yeah. It's so, I don't know, it's so uplifting to me. And no shots, but it really is weirdos. Like, like, like oh yeah, no, I, I mean that in yeah. the most endearing way. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I always say like I think it's interesting, but I feel like the most I feel like most people who are attracted to art are or like often they are because in some way, shape, or form, art has become something that they can use to expel trauma. So I think that's why a lot of yeah. artists are attracted to art because they're hurt. You know what I mean? Mm. It's why a lot of artists, I think, have a lot of trauma. Mm. And that's beautiful in a lot of ways, but it also creates an industry where there's, like, a lot of people who take advantage of people. Hurt people hurt people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow, yeah. When you put it like that. I mean, Mm -hmm. the one one thing I don't like about um, the whole, like, artists have to be in pain and all that stuff, which, (laughs) like, honestly, like, a lot lot of artists are. Oh, for sure. But... I don't like that uh, the the notion that in order to create you to like, be great art, like yeah. you have to be, you have to like want to kill yourself. Yeah, you know what I mean, like <laughs> it shouldn't it shouldn't be like that. Like yeah, for, right. for it's such a romanticized way of looking at it mm-hmm. that it's actually, I feel it's detrimental to the artists themselves. You know, because like you you aren't allowed to complain about anything. Yeah, I mean, it's like oh hey, I I, I want to go on tour, but like. I couldn't book any hotels, and then you'll hear like in like as a response like, 
dog just sleep in the car just sleep in the van yeah exactly it's like, but <laughs> it's like but i don't want to yeah but, uh, what the fuck <laughs> but i don't want to sleep in the van yeah, yeah. i'm touring in alaska like <laughs> i'm not gonna do that <laughs> like stop being a bitch figure yeah. it out like, <laughs> like, yeah i was like well yeah well you know like back in the day they used to do this i'm like cool for them that's awesome but like yeah. i'm not mm, no uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, i don't know it sucks because like when you're actually like depressed and all that stuff like you don't want to do anything. The of last course, thing, yeah. last thing on your mind is like, ah, oh, yes, I need to, I need to write about how I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, it makes no sense. Yeah, like I, I don't know, I don't know. I, I feel like people should kind of. This notion I feel comes from people who don't do art. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, hundred percent. When I saw you live, it was funny. You kept like. You kept saying like I wrote the song and I was depressed and it, it, it was it was like every song and I was like holy shit like you did okay and it, <laughs> like you you were like one of the few people that yeah. like took me just like yo I was like is, is he alright <laughs> like, is he okay and, then, and like you know like the people who who were just there to just like enjoy just like oh my god he's so quirky <laughs> he's so quirky I was like uh, is he alright <laughs> is he gonna make it home okay I was like. <laughs> It's such a dark. Yeah, I was like, this, who is this guy? Uh, Did have you used like music to get you through like hard points of your life, oh, like songwriting yeah. and just creating music in general? Like, has it helped you mentally? Yeah, all the time actually. Uh-huh. <laughs> There's like a running joke in my um, like my friend group, especially like when I'm like dating someone. They'll always tell me. They'll always say, "Dude, wait I'm for the so- breakup album." Yeah, no, they <laughs> yeah. say that all the time, and I fucking hate them for it. They're just like. Like, bro, you look so happy. I'm like, oh, thanks, man. Yo, I can't wait for that. I'm just gonna come out. It's gonna be so fire. <laughs> it's like, it's like I remember, I remember when Kanye and Kim got divorced. Yeah. All the memes on oh, Instagram yeah, was like, get ready for Kanye to drop the yeah. most fire album in the past decade. Dude, people are saying the same shit about like Drake and Rihanna. Yeah, yeah. It's like, thank God they were. It's like finally Rihanna needed yeah, to come out with something. Right, finally, oh, can't wait for Rihanna to drop the best breakup album of 2022. <laughs> like. It's so funny. But it's up. so true, though. It's so, yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It is. To an extent. Yeah. No, like, I totally acknowledge it. I'm just mm-hmm. like, like, I get mad at my friends, but I also don't, like, object to it. Mm-hmm. You know? It's like, oh, I can't wait. And I'm just like, dude, fuck you. <laughs> <sighs> it's coming out this summer. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. I just submitted it. It's like, it's like it's pre-saving my bio. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> Lincoln bio. <laughs> That's never going to happen. Yeah. Link in my link tree to pre-save this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Dude, I hate that so much. I mean, it's true, though. Yeah, I've, I've, there's been so many moments in my life where I you can't really... I mean, you know, at the end of the day, I, I feel like you're kind of just like by yourself yeah. when you're when you're when you're dealing with your own stuff. Yeah, you could like vent to other people, right? But they're not gonna carry that with them. Like you still have to carry the the repercussions of like whatever this, you know, for lack of a better word, like traumatic event or something, right? Something mm-hmm. something that you're going through, and so um, when like you can't really express it to someone else, there's no one else to express it to mm. but yourself, and Sometimes you don't even know how to do that. Yeah. So you find diff- these different ways, these different outlets, and, and music's always been that for me. In in that like, there, there's a really cool quote. I just can't I can't think of it right now, but it, it, it's it's something about, um, like, oh gosh, when you want to like feel thoughts or when you want to feel emotions, like you listen to music. Hmm. I you understand. You want to know that. like what. Yeah. It, if you want to know what an emotion feels like, feels like not just like feeling, but just like as a visceral reaction, then you listen to music or you, you do music. That's really interesting to me. That's a really paraphrase. <laughs> but <laughs> but no, yeah, but I, I know what you mean though. <laughs> I, I feel like I talk about this in every interview. I don't know why it comes up so much, but um, a, a friend of mine, Richard, he mm. told me, uh, I call him Dick. Uh, for, for, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he's going to watch this and be like, yeah, no, but uh, my, my friend Richard, he said something to me a couple months ago that made a lot of sense, and I think about it a lot. It's um, 
we're talking about like journaling and like mm. writing down your thoughts yeah, yeah. and like r- writing them into like poems and songs and things yeah. of that nature. And he was like, you know, like when you, uh, it's funny, I was just talking about this in the car actually. Um, we were talking about like, you know, it's funny, like when you have a bunch of thoughts in your head, they don't come with context. Like they kind of just like float around in the ether, you know, and yeah. like they're just like, you know, there's one thought over here and there's another thought over here, but they're supposed to go together but they aren't necessarily in the same place. Yeah. You know, when, when you write your thoughts into a song or a poem or you journal, it's almost like giving them context. It's like taking all these random sporadic pieces in your head and then making them into the puzzle that fits. Yeah. And it's like, that's always how I've thought of songwriting. Wow. That's that's really cool. Yeah, right? Yeah, just, wow. Thinking about, thinking about it as just contextualizing your thoughts and stuff. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. Right? Yeah. Isn't is that a... Shout, 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 shout out to Dick. Shout out to Dick for sure. <laughs> Dick's a genius. Yeah. Shout out to that guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've written like... Oh, this, see, this is going to sound like I'm, I'm reinforcing the notion. But no, like I've written... Like the best songs I've written ever in my life, they've always been like when I had like a overwhelming, compelling like emotion. Like yeah. to, whether it was happy or sad. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah. maybe like an intense melancholy. It's like, yeah. it's always like when you have like something really strong emotionally, that oh, like it yeah. makes you, you keep thinking about it. Yeah. Those make the best songs in my opinion. Yeah. I feel that. I feel like that's like how my, my best songs get made too. Yeah. yeah. You, um, so there's like a lot of people, like I realized this when I saw that you played the, the Davis Cherry Boston Festival and you know, Eli and everything. There's like a lot of people that I know that like you've kind of just like in the circle with them. Like there's, there's a lot of, seems like you have a, like a big musical network out here since you've been playing for so long like when when did you start to kind of develop like a musical network and start to meet a lot of people like how did you go about meeting lots of people and like getting those connections in the bay area music scene um honestly school <laughs> we're, we're that's, school. How, that's how uh diablo valley college that's how oh, i that's met what, yeah that's how i met a lot of them actually that's where i went yeah dropped out oh yeah <laughs> I, we out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of what you see as like a musical network. We were all kind of just like in one class, a couple of classes. You know, just yeah. like, oh hey, mutual friends. Like oh hey, this guy is cool. Oh, so that's kind of how it started for me. It never felt. It never. It never felt like oh I have to go network. It was yeah, it's more a weird concept. Like, yeah, it, it, it's like it's this weird, weird like. Like to balance contradictory thing you have exactly. to think about where it's like oh i do have to network but also i actually think this person this is, is really dope. dope yeah and what they're doing is really dope and i want to be a part of that and i want to support it um but also like i kind of need like a gig and stuff like at the i feel like it's kind of like totally there you. so you got to think of like both things at once but at the same time every kind of musician does that i feel in the sense of like oh like i should probably talk to this person like mm-hmm. they kind of like headed this whole thing, cool, keep in touch with them. They're really dope. I really like what they do. I want to be doing what they're doing, all that stuff. But also, like, when you say it like that, it sounds very it sounds like opportunistic. It, exactly. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. And it's a really hard, like, line to tote and a yeah. way to balance. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's like, you know, like, I'm very lucky to where, like, this is my life now. And it's like the vast, ma- thank you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's like the vast majority of my friends, like, I've met through music, which mm-hmm. is really cool. Like I, I still have like a lot of friends I met through high school. Like, like I met, I met both of them through, well, kind of in like some, in like both like weird removed ways. I met them through high school, oh. but it's like most of the people that I'm like with all, you know, around mostly I've met through music and that's really cool. But it's also like, I feel lucky that I have that because in the beginning I didn't really know how to balance like the, okay, like I want to be friends with these people because we have common interests and I really like them. But I don't want it to seem like I'm like being opportunistic or like yeah. oh like I mean use you, like like use you for this use you use you for that it's like that's not what you, it's weird it's a it's, really it's a it's really hard a, line yeah. to toe it's it's bizarre uh, I I used to get like kind of depressed about it yeah it's like damn am I am I a snake am I you know what I, mean? I like, get I, that I feel that all the time but um I, one thing that kind of like keeps me away from that is like everyone does it but everyone's doing it. At least, like, with the circle that I've made. Mm-hmm. Right? I don't even really think about a circle. It's like, oh, hey, that's this person. That's this person. That's this yeah, person, yeah, right? Yeah. But um, I just think about it like, oh, this is what we do. That's just, that's just part of it. And it's just yeah. getting to know people, mm-hmm. you know? Honestly, <laughs> I'm anti-social. <laughs> really? <laughs> I, don't, I don't like meeting people. <laughs> really? Yeah, but, like, I know... That like again, this is where like if 
when I say it out loud, I feel mm-hmm. like a snake. Um, I know that I should, and I know that when I'm there and I'm in the moment, that I need to, because yeah. like, the people that I see that I like want to interact with, they're so dope. Mm-hmm. They're so cool. I want to be part of it. Like I want to uplift them in some way. I think about it like um, like going to the gym or like exercising. How so? In in the way that like you know like I don't want to go to the gym. Yeah. I want to exercise. But, but you're glad you're that you did it. But when you're there, oh yeah. Afterwards, you're like, this is cool. This yeah, is nice. I'm like, I want to keep this. doing this. Yeah. And then the, like the next time, <laughs> like <laughs> like a, a situation arises, oh, I want to do this. And then they're this. like, oh, this is great. This yeah. is actually dope. So <laughs> I get that. That I feel like for me, that's how I kind of like detach myself because mm-hmm. like I already feel like I just like don't want to do these things. But in the in the moment, I I genuinely do. So again, it's like this weird dichotomy of things <laughs> yeah it's a balance it's strange yeah. and i i relate to you like like it, it, it's really weird it's weird like it's hard i i, I almost i don't know if i i don't know if imposter syndrome is the right word mm. but it, like sometimes like i mean i totally relate to the fact that like it's like i don't want to be disingenuine like i'm not yeah. it, but like i know i'm no i know i'm not doing this for the wrong reasons yeah, 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 yeah. but it's like Sometimes you can't help but feel like, like, you know, should I be in this place? Yeah. And it's weird. I think now, like, I feel a lot better about it now, yeah. I think, because, like, I'm in, like, I'm in these spaces every single day now. Yeah. So it's like, it doesn't really feel as weird anymore. Yeah. But, like, there was certainly a point where it did. Like, there was really a Ooh. point where it did. And it was, like, hard. And it's like, I think what helped me with that was, like, kind of, I, I just tell myself, I'm always like, okay, I know why I'm here. I know my intentions. I know that they're genuine, and if people don't understand that, that's totally fine. I'm just gonna do me, and and I, I told, I kept telling myself that, and that helped me get like kind of over like the the weirdness of being in these musical spaces and stuff. But it, I'm gonna take that with me. Yeah, I, right. I don't really think about it like that, but like honestly, like that way just seems more natural. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, think think about it, right? Like, like if you're at a show and you're like kicking in people, talking to people, whatever, yeah. it's like, dude, like, like you know you're a good person, like you know you're there for the right reasons, like because mm. you're a genuine guy, like, 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 like oh, thanks, yeah, dude, yeah. but 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 like you know that you're like not there for the wrong reasons, yeah. So it's like as long as you know that, fuck what the people think, because you, yeah. you, you can't you can't control it, yeah. And I I don't, and it took me like a while to realize that, but I also realized that you're not gonna click with everybody. Yeah. You know, and that's yeah. okay. Yeah, that's totally fine. Yeah. yeah. As long as, like, you can be civil, right? Yeah. And, and understand, like, all right, if we're not going to be cool, there's still a transaction that needs to be made. Yeah. And as long as, like, we're both cool about it, you know, then we're good. Exactly. Yeah. Like, like, a lot of the people I met through music, like, some of them I really click with, and those yeah. are the ones that like, have gone on to become, like, really good friends of mine. Yeah. And we hang out and do shit, whatever. Yeah. But it's, like, there's other ones where it's just, like, okay, like, me and this, per- like, this person's awesome. They're a great person, but, like, we don't really, like, click on that level. You know what yeah. I mean? And, yeah, that, yeah. and that's fine. Like, you're yeah. not going to click with everybody like that. It's strange, but, um, yeah. when yeah. you, um, so I know you are not only a rapper, but you're a singer and an instrumentalist, and you do all your own production, right? Yes. What one of those things came first singing okay so you started yeah, singing singing was what, what was the order how did you get to that point it was so it was singing mm-hmm. and then it was instruments and then it was rapping and then it was production okay <laughs> that's not what i would have guessed <laughs> what, what what would you think or what do you think what the, what the order was going to be i definitely would have guessed singing first and then I would have guessed instrumentalist. I, I actually, I probably would have. I probably would have, would have went instrumentalism and then singing, mm. and then definitely production before rapping. I would not have think you started rapping oh, before producing because it seems like instrumentalism is a more natural segue to production. Well, eh, I guess it depends what you were playing. Yeah, if you're playing like keys, I guess then it's more of a natural segue. But I guess I'm gonna ask you, what did you start playing when you when you started, started playing music? I started playing. Um, Piano in fifth grade. Okay, yeah. And then I did it for like a year and then had to stop because, you know, money and all that stuff. Yeah. And then afterwards, I, I mean, I didn't like keep going with it. I kind of like fell off of it and until, again, like the, the open mics I started doing, I started getting back into it just because of that. And then I picked up guitar and that was just like me just like teaching myself how to do all this stuff. Mm. So I would like, <laughs> I started to just go on a computer search up like guitar chords or guitar <laughs> tabs yeah and just figure out just how to do it myself 
Let right. me ask you this: as a music teacher and somebody who's like multi instrumentalist, I've I've always said this, but I want you to back up my theory right now. <laughs> okay. So I've always said like, okay, if I could do it all over again, if I wanted to, let's say I wanted to learn every instrument there was, I think the best and most beneficial thing you could start on is piano because oh. there's like an implied level of theory that oh. you automatically learn. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Like all of the theory stuff, like. The example that they use is a piano. Exactly. Just because of how clear everything is. Mm -hmm. Like, you could just see it like, oh, hey, what's this letter? Oh, it's an A. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's like a third up? Oh, it's a C. As opposed to like if you were on a guitar. So you can see it, yeah. It's not as intuitive. Yeah, especially since like there's no there's no bass clef on the guitar and like yeah. it's all straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's different. Whereas like piano, which like you said, like yeah. it's very intuitive. There's like, there's 88 notes. Like, yeah, it's, it's laid right out there. right there for you. <laughs> And you could like feel like what a chord is. So uh -huh. yeah, I would definitely do piano first. Do you play anything else besides piano and guitar now? I mean, like ukulele, but uh -huh. I don't know if that really counts. <laughs> back on just like dude, back on my music bit. elitism shit. I remember when I was like younger, I literally would be like, yeah, like the ukulele is like not an instrument. <laughs> like, and, like, and that oh, was no, I know it's an instrument. I just like yeah, I, like, like dabble it. around in it. Uh -huh. like, I'm I'm like I feel like I cheat because I'm using oh. This is like guitar a little bit, you know. Like I'm not actually doing like ukulele stuff. Okay, yeah, I'm doing you're like playing guitar like guitar stuff on a ukulele. It's like how like a bass player will play like rhythm guitar sometimes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's you know, I, I feel like well, it's like maybe like someone who like does beats and stuff and like does a beat machine is like, oh yeah, I can I can play the drums a little bit. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. But yeah, it's like you know. That, that's how I feel about it. Like, technically, I can, but I, I wouldn't consider myself, like, a ukulele musician. That's an interesting way to put yeah. it, actually. I never really thought about it like that. <laughs> you ever try any percussion instruments or anything? Uh, I want to. Mm -hmm. I want to. I just, just drum kits are so expensive. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And just, like... The only reason I learned how to play boo is because my, the first drum kit I got for $20. Really? Yeah. Yo, that's pretty good. It was that's a, really good. It was a garbage groove percussion drum set that somebody's going to throw it away, but it, it got me through the first two years of learning what if I wanted to learn or not, and then I was like, this is fun as fuck, and then I learned. My first guitar that I was playing on was like this like really shitty like Spanish guitar from Costco <laughs> that was like 40, 50 bucks or something. <laughs> I love Spanish. Like, yeah. uh, acoustically, I still play on my Spanish guitar more than anything else. Oh, it's dope. Just because I love it's finger picking that, on a Spanish guitar. It's just that, like, the, the frets the are so wide. Yeah. Like, when I was, like, in middle school, like, I could not, I could barely do any yeah. of that stuff. But, I mean, it's, yeah, I, I've developed a, a, an affection for, like, Spanish guitars and stuff. Like, flamenco, like, that's so mm -hmm. dope. I wish I could do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Traditional like Spanish guitars are, they have nylon strings, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 So that's so mine is half nylon, half brass. Oh. Okay. Which is kind of everybody who sees it, it's like that's really weird. I've never seen that before. Yeah, on a Spanish guitar. That yeah, is, that is a little a little the It's dog. strange. I don't know where it, my, my my grandpa gave it to me. I, uh, I I don't know where he got it or anything. You know, my grandpa seems like the kind of guy who buy a guitar from Costco. So I, I could definitely <laughs> <laughs> maybe he got it there. Uh, I'll ask him. Maybe we got the same one. Maybe, yeah. dude, maybe. <laughs> I would assume that rapping would be like the furthest cry from anything else you did prior. So how did you get into doing that? I I did it because it... So <laughs> so I was like really obsessed with YouTube back in middle school. And at that point, like everyone was like... Like, like YouTube was like really, really popping off in terms of like becoming a global phenomenon or at least yeah. like a national one, right? Especially for the Asian community. Mm -hmm. um, and there was like a lot of like rappers and stuff and there was a lot of like, oh, hey, there's this, there's this like instrumental challenge. So like people would just rap on it. Yeah. And like, I, <laughs> this is really petty, but there was rappers in my middle school that would just boast about how good at <laughs> rapping that they were. And I just like, I just knew that they were trash. <laughs> You're like, you can't be that good. Yeah. Like, they were just like, yeah, I do, I do this. And like, they would like spit bars and stuff. I'm like, this sucks. <laughs> this is terrible. I could do way better than this. So I actually, that's when I first started. Because <laughs> I, I, was, I was just so appalled by how bad that they were. I was like, I got I to gotta, 
I gotta be better than this. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta let people know there's something better than this. So that was in middle school? Yeah, that was in middle school. Were you listening to a lot of hip hop back then? It's yeah. interesting to me that you got so into hip hop at an early age. Like, I assume because that's kind of contrary to, like, I feel like most people who grow up playing instruments. Really? I would think so. I, oh, I don't know. I, a lot of my musical tastes, uh, I can credit to my older brother. Mm-hmm. So he was like, he was in like high school, college when I was like in middle school. So, and he had like a very eclectic playlist of, of just music that he would just put on all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I grew up, grew up a lot on like nineties and like two thousand R and B. So that's like where all of like my singing stuff comes from. Um, but as for like more of the rap stuff, like he'd like put me onto a lot of rap stuff. Like what kind of early? What, what were like the biggest early rappers you were listening to that you think like influenced you to get into it? E forty. <laughs> well, bro, you, you're, you're 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 living in Vallejo. I yeah, mean, like, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it was just funny. Like for Bay Area music, I didn't realize it was a specifically Bay Area thing mm. until I like was out of the Bay Area for a little bit, and I was like putting on the music. I was like. You know, I was like, oh, like, I'll just put on, like, something that everyone knows. And then I'm yeah. like, yo, are you from the Bay? I'm like, yeah. Wait, you don't know the song? It's like, no, I mean, I do, but it's very, it's very Bay Area. I'm like, yeah. The- Wait, y'all, do y'all grow up on this? <laughs> no, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. And I, I just thought it was just, like, everywhere. I, had, I So, the, my friend Ian that I was telling you about, when yeah. he was here uh, last week from St. Louis, we were talking, and I, I was playing, a, I was playing a, like, a Du Bois song. Yeah, yeah. And he was all like, dude, you know, like, nobody outside of the here knows who the <laughs> fuck SOB is? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I think I knew that. But, yeah, like, it's, like, it's funny to contextualize, you know? It's like, yeah, it's like, yeah nobody outside of the Bay Area, like, listens it's, to SOB. <laughs> it's so weird. Just, like, the confidence that comes from, like, living in the Bay Area and just like, listening oh, to the, sure. like, the very specifically Bay Area music and thinking, like, Oh, everyone knows this shit. Mm-hmm. I mean, the thing is, a lot of music Comes steals from, from it. Steals from it. Yeah. I, I'm. I was gonna say I'm not gonna be like I'm totally gonna be that guy. Be that guy. It's oh, true. Dude, hell of, Oh my god. So many. So much music. So much. Music. So much. Like the bass line, like the drums, specifically the bass line in hip hop. Oh yeah, like like I'm telling you, like Bay Area hip hop was on like the deep rooted 808s before, oh, yeah. like a lot of very like minimalist production, very but it like minimalist. it like where it hits, it hits. Also, like the very like abrasive deliveries that it's in a lot oh, of like, yeah. modern hip hop yep. totally came from the Bay. Like yep. it's like. I don't want to say like Detroit bit the bay because I don't think that happened. I think they, I think they like have similar styles, but I feel like a lot of other places were influenced by the bay and Detroit simultaneously because we kind of have a similar style of music. And a lot of that mm. came with like the weird crossover between like Empire and then a lot of Detroit labels, mm. which is interesting. Like, like you look at people like Baby Tron and like Shitty Boys, like they're they're from Detroit, but they're signed to like Empire. Yeah. 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 It's weird, right? Yeah. What? Mm-hmm. And they're pretty much like. On the other sides of the country. But they sound much. exactly like Bay Area rappers. Yeah, yeah. But there's also a lot of like, I mean, like, there's a lot of like Bay Area rappers that sound like Detroit guys. Yeah. That, that, I feel like this, um, I know this is like a little, little adjacent. It's not exactly like, uh, on topic, but like, I feel like a lot of like Bay Area rappers, like, kind of like, they let their nostalgia hold them back in the mm, sense that, like, yeah. You know what I mean? It's, I know what it's, you mean. it's, it's, it's too, specifically bay area to the point where just like no one kind of in the same way it's like you know no one really outside of here listens yeah. to this like it's kind of in that way where they kind of just like put themselves into the box i will say though i as somebody who interviews like a lot of rappers i feel like that's becoming like less and less of really a thing, which is really cool Oh, that's good yeah like it's funny like I feel like I actually rarely interview rappers now that have like a very specifically Bay Area catered sound, oh, cool. which is really fascinating. That's good. Because like That's I, cool. yeah, it's cool, and I feel like there's a lot. And I feel like I don't know, like this is gonna sound arrogant because I'm like, oh look, I'm in this world, I get it. But it's no, like you're, I mean, you're, you're, inter- you're directly interacting with the community. Yeah, like, you're more informed than I ever. <laughs> 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 yeah, but it's like it's cool to me that like. I do think like there's a very big trend of like more like electronic influence, mm. like Atlanta sounds that are happening in the Bay mm. right now that I feel like isn't being documented, especially in hip hop, mm. which is super fascinating to me. There's a lot of producers like in the South Bay that are working with like more like eclectic palettes of like electronic uh, instrumentalism, almost like almost like EDM influenced hip hop, mm. like a 
one of my favorite producers from San Jose right now. Uh, his name is Dream Awake. Shout out Dream Awake. It's the boy. But uh, he, he works a lot with, like, you know, the activists. And he's, like, um, he works with a lot of, like, that very, like, electronic sound. And it's interesting, like, a lot of the guys he works with from the Bay Area are kind of working from a similar blueprint. But he mm. was, like, a lot of, like, my first, like, introduction into understanding how prevalent that world is now. And it's cool because it's, like, I feel like the Bay Area in hip-hop is starting to have a bit less of a sound, which is really awesome, I think. Yeah, I mean, it feel, you know, you gotta grow. You gotta yeah, grow. Yeah, exactly. You gotta grow. And, like, it's not like the sound's ever gonna leave. Mm-hmm. I mean, people are still bumping, like, fucking... What? Like E forty and two shores like yeah. all the time. Like it's not leaving. That'll never change. Yeah. So And it shouldn't. Grow yeah. Just just grow. Just make some dope shit. I agree. <laughs> It'd be cool if we get to a place eventually where people from the bay, like well, I don't know, I feel like we're almost there actually already, but it's like I feel like five years ago, ten years ago, rappers from the Bay were moving to LA be specifically because of the fact that they didn't want to get boxed in with the mm, Bay Area sound. I feel that. You I know? feel that. Yeah. Like, they wanted to do more, like, experimental hip-hop or, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. just, like, maybe, like, more lyrical-based hip-hop. Just stuff that doesn't really like, pop in the Bay in the hip-hop yeah. scene. Yeah, so yeah, they yeah. kind of, like, okay, I'm, where can I do this? Yeah. Probably not here. Yeah. I'm I'm niche here. <laughs> For sure, yeah. For sure. I, yeah. That's interesting. Actually, asking you about that, I mean, like, so you, you sing, you mm-hmm. produce, you rap, you play music. What I need to teach music as well. Do you, like... Would you ever want to like work in music outside of making your own stuff? Because I feel like you have so many pathways too. I mm. guess you already do if you're a music teacher. Uh, one of my biggest things that I want to do is like I definitely want to be like a songwriter mm. for like artists. Like yeah. I feel like that's like the dopest thing. Just working with so many different people, or or even just like the artists like that I I like look up to. Like I would fucking love to That'd write cool. for people. So. Uh, at least, like, yeah, I do have a lot of different pathways. Like, I could have opening it up to me. But I, I feel when it comes to, like, being successful in the music industry, you have to be versatile. For sure. Yeah, we're doing a ton of things. Because when it comes to, I guess, like, success, it, it's it's all about versatility, as far as I'm concerned, at least. Like, because your income is going to be coming from, like, different, different, different yeah. places. So you, you got to be able to do all those different things well in order to, you know, stay alive and all that stuff. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Especially like in the modern music industry, mm-hmm. like we're, we're drifting more and more into that world. We're like, yeah. you kind of can't do one thing anymore. Like yeah. You have to kind of do everything now, especially when like you can learn how to do everything from your laptop in your room on YouTube. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's kind of moving a place where it's like, okay, like. You almost have to learn how to like. If you're a rapper, it's kind of, and you want to like make beats, or or you, or you want to like work on a very specific type of production. Mm-hmm. A lot of the time, you're gonna have to make that yourself because it's yeah. hard to like cater your sound a lot to like other people's it's beats. Expensive. It's very expensive. <laughs> That's it's actually why I started expensive. producing. Really? Because <laughs> I wanted to like make songs and stuff. Originally, like the the artist I wanted to be, it was just gonna be cool. I'm gonna do like play guitar, play piano, and just sing. Mm-hmm. Right, but then I got bored. Yeah. I got totally bored of it. But then when it came to production, I didn't know a fucking thing. Yeah, and I was like asking around, like, "Hey, like producers, like, you know, this would be cool." I was like, "All right, cool. You're gonna have to pay this." I'm like, "This? You know, I'm all about like paying artists and all yeah, that stuff, right?" But, but it's like I can't like, afford that. Dude, yeah. Like I, I just got done busking for like three hours, and I only got like fucking fifty dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Like, that's all I got. Like, I don't yeah. know what to tell you. I had to use part of that to get back to my house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's kind of why I started, like, going into production. Because I was like, damn, I can't, I can't be paying for this shit all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cheap. I'm very You'd stingy. be so surprised how many people have started, they have told me they've started production for that exact same yeah, reason. Yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised. Yeah. Musicians have to be stingy. You have to, dude. You gotta. It's a very, very expensive thing to get into. You got you, a lot of people who don't understand. Like you're probably gonna have to eat shit for the first like five, six years of you yeah. doing it. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, that's the same as anything, though. It's the same as starting any business. Yeah. When yeah. you're a musician, you're starting a business. Yeah, and that's that's that that really ties into what we were saying earlier about like you have to do like a ton of things. You yeah. Have to wear a, a bunch of different hats because not only. You know, if you want to like be completely independent, you got to be your own manager. You got to be your own mm-hmm. like PR person, all that stuff. Like, not lawyer because that, that's yeah troublesome. But um, 
you got to do like all that stuff. Your own graphic designer, video editor. And that's super hard, but like uh, yeah. that's what it takes. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to school for music, right? Uh, I will be going to school for music. I'm actually going to Long Beach soon. So. Oh, nice, dude. Yeah. When do you leave? Uh, in a couple months, actually. That's crazy. So yeah. you're going all the way down to SoCal. Yeah. I, mean, I don't really like SoCal, but you know, you got to do what you got to do. I guess Long Beach is a little removed from LA, though. A little bit, yeah. But, you know, if I want to be good about, like, performing and networking and all that stuff, I got to mm-hmm. gotta go into shark infested waters and all that stuff. What specifically are you, are you just majoring in music or? Yeah. So I'm majoring in music. I'm going to be going there for vocal performance. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's a kind of like a niche major. Vocal performance? A little that's, bit. That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. So I'm going to uh, be doing a lot of like classical stuff and like. <laughs> Do you say <laughs> that? Which is interesting. Are you excited or not No, excited I am. I am. Because like at the end of the day, like I already know that like for the stuff that I want to do in terms of like my music, like I, I feel like I'm already at a good enough point. Like I don't need to go to school for it, hmm. but I do want to be the best singer I can never be. Yeah. And I know with that uh, education under my belt and just like, you know, being around like-minded people is going to help me grow even further than I would have been able to by myself. Oh, of course. I think the like-minded people thing is a big thing in regards to music school. You know, like most people I talk to, it's funny. Like I I talk to a lot of people about like their experience of going to school for music and you get like a very vast range of like thoughts on it. It's like some people are like, okay, like, I hated it. It wasn't worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people are like, it was totally worth it. Yeah. It, I'm so glad I spent the money. But then some people, I get this a lot too. A lot of people are all like, oh, like the what I got the most from it was mm. the connections. Yeah. 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 When I, when I, because I, I was taking some time to like make the decision like, oh, do I want to go back to school and all that stuff? I was asking a lot of my friends who like did go to music school. It's like, oh, like, what do you think? Hmm. what do you think about it it's like oh it's all about the like the connections but it's also they kept saying the same thing just like you you put in uh you you get out get what out, you put, you put in, in. Yeah, yeah. yeah 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 and it was just like that like consistent thing every single time mm. it's like damn okay all right <laughs> <laughs> and again it, it it calls back to that whole thing about like oh i know what i need to do in order to get where i need to be yeah so i'm just like okay cool i know that if i'm there i can socialize Mm -hmm. and and get and get like good connections and all that stuff and like build a good network but again you know in a genuine way yeah i mean then also like also like having the wide range of skills that you do being able to produce and sing and play instruments is like there's there's probably going to be no shortage of like work you know what i mean someone's gonna need something yeah and i'll be able to provide so that's that's cool if you can learn to engineer then you really got the full (sighs) trifecta of things you can do but like for me, I was like, I'm like after a certain point, I I just I just want to I don't want to be too far removed from the music itself. Yeah, that is interesting actually. Yeah. Like I guess like the further you get down, it is like oh, it's actually actually a good way of putting it. Like you get further and further removed from it, the more yeah. like you do these things that are kind of related to it, but like not yeah. doing it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, like that's the, really weird. The last thing I want to do is hate music. Mm. And there was, like, never been a point, thankfully, so far that, like, I've, like, hated doing music. Yeah. And I feel like that's that, that's why I'm trying to be, like, good about, like, okay, the things I'm doing now, I think it's wide enough. Mm-hmm. Now it's just about, like, going, like, deeper and stuff. But I felt like if I spread myself, like, any thinner, then I'd be like, damn, why am I... <laughs> Why, why am I talking like a producer or something? Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I was supposed to be, <laughs> I was supposed to be rapping about bitches, man. Yeah. <laughs> what happened to the bitches and money? Yeah. Like, why am I, why am I talking about major seventh chords? Like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know. Oh, like like a like a producer in in the sense like a like a yeah. movie producer. You know what I mean? We're just like, oh, like I, we need to get this, we need to get that for like the music video or something like that. And I'm just, I don't want to do, I don't want to do all that. Why am I talking about relatable triads when I could be talking about hoes and cars? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Honestly, like a lot of my music that I do, like talk, like, like music for rapping, like I always talk about like the opposite, not to be that's like, true. Oh, I'm not like I'm not like, I'm not di- like the other. I'm not like the other rappers. Yeah, and stuff. but like that's true though. I can't. For me, I can't rap about like money and stuff, and and feel genuine about it, and or yeah. have it come off as genuine. Because I'm just, 
<laughs> I'm just like, dog, I, after the show, I'm going to McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I spent $90 on yeah. gas. Yeah. yeah. Dude, like, I spent more, I wasted money, like, coming here to perform at the yeah. show than the money that I'm getting back from the show. Gas is $7. A, gas is so dumb. Uh, I, is so I, dumb. I, it's literally highway robbery at this yeah. point. Which is why I'm thankful y'all drove all the way. Dude, I mean, I was willing to drive, drive y'all, but, you know. Yeah, we don't, we don't have a space yet. It's all good. It's going to happen. If people could drive to us, we would gladly accept. Oh, but, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's become, but dude, you know, the funny thing is, like, you say long, but, like, like, like we're talking about, like, Vallejo feels so short to me. Yeah. To drive to because we're so used to driving to the city. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's not even that like the distance isn't even that different, but it's like I think the bridge is what makes it the bridge. Like, yeah, the yeah. bridge makes it feel way yeah. longer. Oh yeah, especially because like that, when that that invoice comes in. <laughs> oh my god, dude! Fast track is bugging on me right it's now. So I, I, I don't know why, yeah. but like they keep saying my account it 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 won't like it. Keep, they keep saying it's overdrawn, but there's money in my account and it's not like I don't know. It fast track. Fast Track's fast weird. Track's like, Fast Track's one of the things that, like, the Bay got wrong. You That's know, what like, I'm saying. I feel like it's a great idea and concept, but, like, it just doesn't really work as well as it should. Yeah. Maybe it's just me. I've, I've just had bad luck with it, maybe. But, like, Bart is, like, great. You know, like, Bart's Bart, cool. Bart, Bart, Caltra- Bart, have you ever tried Caltrain? Caltrain's cool, too. Caltrain's nice. Yeah. It's clean. And yeah. Like, you know, it's nice. Muni. Muni. Muni solid. Cool. Sam Trans. Sam Trans. I used to take the bus all the time. The contrast the bus system is really good too. Yeah, yeah. I remember I like was yeah. I would take the bus to the city. I was so like to the city. You can do that. Fucking lame. Like I I didn't realize like I I was so scared of using Bart. I just didn't use it. Really? So I like rode Samtrans because like I would take the bus to school and stuff. So like the mm-hmm. bus was the only thing I was comfortable with. So I would take the bus all the way to the city. I didn't even know you could do that. Yeah. It's I used to when I was, hours. Yeah, it seems like it, it probably would. Yeah. When I was a kid, um, like I was one of those kids who like before I, before I could drive, I wanted to go everywhere. Oh so, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I biked everywhere. I remember me and my friends so, when we were like younger, probably like twelve, thirteen. Yeah, we used to always like go to the city to go to, like Westfield Mall yeah, or like yeah. go to like yeah, you know yeah. all all the dumb little city things you do as yeah. a kid. But it's like we would always so living in Concord, what we do is we'd bike to the nearest bus stop, take our bikes put them on the bus yeah. and then we would take the 10 bus down Clayton Road to Concord Bart and then we would take our bikes on Bart and then take Bart to the city. So it was like a four hour process and like, <laughs> yeah, but I, we would do that like every weekend and it was like, we just go ride our bikes around the city. That's fucking dope though. Like, Yeah, it like, was cool. Actually, like biking in the city is so dope. Oh, it's the best. Yeah. I used to skate in the city all the time. Like Damn. I would just go like by myself late at night and just like skate around like Union Square and so it, it's amazing. Yo, that's, that's so cool. Yeah. That's so cool. I can't like, I, I can like ride a skateboard. I can't do any of the cool shit though. Like, <laughs> like, Could you like nolly or ollie no, onto the, no. so you'd have to, so you'd come up against the curb and then you'd stop and then you'd pick up the board. I can like, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, no, <laughs> no, yeah. I do that too. <laughs> yeah. I can like, like depending on the curb, if it's just like a short curb, I can yeah, yeah. kind of like, I, I can like nudge my way up yeah, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't have to get all full the way off, like yeah. all the way off. But if, it, if it's a big enough curb, I'm screwed. Yeah. I'm like, I, I don't trust myself on like that. Yeah. Curb. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's one. Th- I, I wish I could do that. Yeah. Because then if, if I could do that, then I, then I could like actually skate like more places. Yeah. Yeah. The one thing I didn't like about like biking in the city was just like, because San Francisco is so hilly. It's weird. Yeah. yeah. It's so hilly and it's like. It's kind of fun though. Yeah. Oh, well, going down. Yeah. <laughs> going down. It's going down going so sucks. Fun. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> to be honest with you, when I was a kid, we would never bike up the hills. We oh, you just walk? We would always walk. Yeah. yeah. No, I was gonna say that. We would always get off our bikes and walk our bikes up the hill. Oh, yeah. Hundred percent, like, dude. But like, but people who bike to work in the city and go like multiple miles, like uphill, downhill, uphill, downhill, they're a different breed. Yeah. Like, how you go do that in, like, work clothes? Like, what the yeah. fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, like, most, like, I, I've wondered that before. Like, part of me, when I used to work at the spaghetti factory, I was always like, God, like, I'd love to bike to work. But it's like, dude, I, I'm I'm in, like, like, I'm in a long sleeve black shirt. I, yeah. I'm going to get sweaty. Hell it's no. like, yeah. what am I going to do, shower work? Like, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, And you're already going to be there for, like, a shift. Yeah, it's like, it's not even worth it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's not worth it at all. Yeah. Yeah, I wish I could have. <laughs> um, Doing music for as long as you've done it. And like doing as many things as you've done, how have you like stayed motivated all of these these years to do it? Like, did you ever get close to stopping? Was there ever a part or a time where you're like, "Wow, like I don't want to do this anymore"? 
or how did you kind of maintain the balance to do it this long? Um, there was only one time where I, I told myself I was like I was I was like it was the closest I ever got to quitting music, mm-hmm. and that was like I think it was like the first year of the pandemic, so like twenty twenty, like late twenty twenty, and it was because like you know there was like so much shit going on, and I just like felt so helpless, and I'm like, dog, what the fuck. What the fuck is this song gonna do? Like, what is this like broken heart, broken <laughs> like, yeah, heartbroken like love song gonna do like for the world? Mm. You know. But then I realized like it's not my job to save the world. Mm. That's not that's not my place. Um, but I feel like what I can bring to the table at the very least like is a moment of like respite, or at least like mm. uh, a, a feeling of like oh hey, this specific thing that I'm going through this person is going through it too or it 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 contextualizes the thoughts that i'm feeling right now so um like i think there was this like one dm i got from this like person i like didn't know i had no clue <clears throat> and they messaged me and they're like hey like you don't got to reply or anything but like i just want to let you know like one of the songs and it was like a song i wrote when i was in like fucking like i was like 18 mm-hmm. and so i'm like 25 26 at this point um just turned away six at this point and then like uh this person wrote to me i was like hey like this song like i listen to it like all the time i like still listen to it and like i know, I know this like, might sound weird or whatever but like this song like saved me more than you know Whoa. and like when i read that i it, it was very humbling because i was like you know not to dismiss whatever this person was going through but i was like you know, this song, it's not that, like, I don't think it's that great, you know, because like, yeah. every artist is critical of themselves, but like, it's that kind of thing where like, you don't understand the influence you can have on people, even the ones that you like, don't know. So when I think about that, like, I always think about like, the moments that I have written about in my music, like, I felt like I needed to say something and I felt like it needed to be heard. Mm. So when it reaches those people, I hope it gives them a sense of like, oh, hey, I I know exactly what, what that feeling is. And so I do it for those people. Because, and that's like what keeps you motivated. Yeah. Yeah. That That's like, I don't know. And it's just fun. Music just like, I always make it really fun. I, I, I try not to be, like I take myself seriously, but you don't at the same time. I try not you to take You can't take it too seriously. Yeah. yeah. Like obviously like the art, art artistic Art in itself is like very serious, like the craft. But like, like, uh, like you know, my friends all joke about like, oh hey, you're gonna make a fire album once like you get your heart broken. It's like, ha, for sure. Like, <laughs> like you just, right? <laughs> yeah, like you right? Like you know what I mean? But like, yeah. it, that's that's like again, like it's like that weird like double thing that you have to do with yourself. But again, it's all genuine. Mm-hmm. So, I think that's that's really what it is for me in terms of oh cool, the um the longevity of what I'm doing. Because I feel like I'm doing something for the world, at least a little yeah. bit, in my own little way. What I like what you just said is that it's not your responsibility to save the world. Yeah, that's actually something I'll take with me because it's it, it, it's very. I think I'm a savior complex. I, mm. I I get very like, you know, in my head about like, oh, I have to do all these things to help yeah. all these people, blah 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 yeah, blah. Yeah, but yeah. it's like, you know, and I do, I I, I do want to do yeah. that. Like in the, the day, yeah. like everybody wants that. You yeah, know? like. I really do want to like build something that I think can truly help people. But yeah, it's also important to understand like that's not really your responsibility. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like you can't worry about more people about people more than you worry about yourself. Yeah. 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 I I, uh, I forgot where I saw this or whatever, but it was something like if if you were to save only one person in the world, hmm. it's OK if that person is yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That wow. that's interesting, and it's not yeah. selfish or mm. or mm. mean. It's just like mm. it's logical. Yeah, it's real. Yeah, and like you know, I mean, like how are you even supposed to help someone else if you can't even help yourself? Yeah, well, that that's super true too. Like, yeah. there's literally no way, like, unless you are mentally there that you you have the with where all to help somebody else. Mm. Mm-hmm. Especially on like a mental health level, you oh, know what I mean. One hundred percent. Yeah, like everybody forgets about <laughs> themselves first. That's it, it, the easiest person to forget about is yourself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's sad but true <laughs> yeah um, oh my goodness over all those years like when you kept doing it because I mean what I, I, I guess I guess I should ask you like literally how, how many years like have you done like 12, 11 how many, music, how many years have you done music yeah a bit like over a decade because really I started like singing like when I was 
not like for shows and stuff, but mm-hmm. I like just like loved singing, loved doing music, all that stuff when I was like five or six. But I didn't start performing until I was like 11 or 12. So over that last decade, what do you think are the biggest things you've improved on? Um, stage presence. That's for yeah. sure. Sometimes I like, I've, I was like so arrogant back then. I thought like, oh, cool. My voice is just going to carry me. Cool. That's like what's going to make the show. No, like you. You still gotta, need presence. Yeah. You got to. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Like you could be. It's all about charisma. Mm-hmm. About charisma and being charming and whatever and all that stuff. Like I always think about it like. <laughs> the person on stage is like the kind of like the person, like the idealized version of myself that yeah, I want to sure. be. <laughs> <laughs> I always think about like, cool, like, like who would I want to see on stage? Yeah. What would grab my attention? So like, I, I, I always think about that and, and keep that in mind with the actions that I do um, for thing, for other things that I, I feel I, I've improved upon. Um, definitely my, musical taste at least mm. like my, my taste that um the music that i make yeah because like, it used to be just like very just like one note just like oh cool here's just like some really cool guitar chords <laughs> and some words yeah but now i i feel like i'm a lot more genuine in, in the things that i'm talking about but the stage presence and do you, th- do you think that's like a confidence thing do you think as you just started like making more music you've been more confident in yourself and that translates better on stage yeah yeah pretty much i mean like, I, I think about it and, like, the words that I write are all uh, all me. Mm. And there's no one else better at being me than me. Than you, yeah. So I keep that with me. And I'm just like, you know, I, I kind of, like, I'm really competitive. I'm actually, like, really competitive. Yeah. So when I get up there, I always think, like, no one can do it like I'm, I'm doing it right now. Mm, I think I, I just talked about this in an interview I did the other day. We were talking about how, like, it's ironic that... Everybody, like, let's, you know, think about social media, right? It's yeah. like everybody on social media, like, wants to portray this, like, form of themselves mm. that isn't them. Yeah. But what they don't realize, and the irony behind that, mm. is that the most thing, the thing that's the most relatable is you being yourself. Yeah. The thing that's the most translatable to other people is you being yourself. Yeah. Because, like you said, what is true originality? True originality is being you. Because yeah. there really is only one you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's weird. It, it's almost ironic, you know? Yeah. It's like, people think like, okay, I'm going to do all these fake things to relate to people. Yeah. But it's like, no, the way you really relate to people is yeah. being yourself, like 100% authentically you. And I think that's how I get people on my side. Mm, yeah. like, I don't, I'm not intimidating at all. I'm not trying to. Yeah. Right? But when I go up there, like... You're super I, unintimidating. I make... Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. <laughs> well, it's good. That means I'm approachable, yeah. right? Uh, I get very... I don't know. Like I, I do like really stupid jokes. Like I, I say things that like I think are funny. I write about stuff that I like genuinely feel about. Um, and so the, the confidence comes from, I'm, I'm just talking. I feel about it. Like I'm, I'm just talking about myself. I'm just telling you about the days that I had or, or mm. things that I've been through. That As somebody real. who like often gets like, I don't, I don't want to say frustrated, mm. but like very involved in like the oversaturated world of people trying to be somebody else. It is very refreshing to see somebody who's like truly themselves. And, and, oh, and nice. yeah, yeah. And, but that, that's like what I tell people. Like that, that's the irony, you know, mm. it's like, yeah, it's like if you want to stand out, be yourself. Like, like if, if you, you want to be, you want people to relate to you, be yourself. Yeah. Yeah. It's you, ironic. It's the opposite of what they think. You'd be surprised. Like, uh, yeah. authenticity is, like, what draws people in. And it's, yeah. you know, like, being someone real and not fabricated is, yeah, it just, people like that. People want that. It's because, valuable. Yeah, it's valuable. It's rare. It's very <laughs> rare. Being in that world for so long, like, what do you think, I guess, oh, this would actually be interesting. So, like, so you've, you've been at this for over a decade. What do you think are the biggest changes within the industry that you've, like, watched kind of? evolve um, in front of your eyes it's this obsession with being viral mm. yeah so that see that that's interesting to me because like i guess like you kind of came up in that era where it's like the biggest thing like what you were talking about like youtube covers and yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. would you say those were less focused on being viral yeah mm. because if you look back at those like really old like youtube covers like even just like early youtube videos yeah. no one gave a shit about like the visuals no one gave a shit about the audio that's like, true they would, like record it off of like like a really shitty like 
power shot, like cannon <laughs> yeah. power shot or something. Yeah. Or even like, you know, what are like, the flip yeah, cameras? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we had that same thought at the same yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like they didn't care. They were just like, oh, cool. Like I want to do a song. Like I want to sing. Yeah. And I want to put it out for people because like it'd be cool. It'd be nice. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of just like blew up because of like, oh, you know, wow, that person's bedroom. That looks like my bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I sing in my bedroom too. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so it's like all this like in authenticity that like, the people were just drawn to because at that point, like YouTube wasn't really a big thing. So a lot of um, the media at the time was like focused on like TV and like shows. And, you know, like that's, there's like, there's lights, there's audio, mm-hmm. there's like recording, there's like all this stuff, like there's makeup, like there's so much, not fluff, right? Because like for TV, like that's, TV movies like you have to do that yeah for you sure. have, to have that stuff yeah because you want to make the like the best product and stuff mm-hmm. but it was something different I was like wow this person just looks like me yeah Ew, what the hell that's so yeah. weird like that's so cool it's like the Justin Bieber, Bieber era oh, yeah. of, of, of YouTube when like he blew up from doing the covers mm, yeah like, that, like as soon as that happened people were like holy shit like yeah. what can happen if I post covers to YouTube yeah you know what no, I mean but that's the thing like the, the, the change was like very quick yeah it was super yeah. quick yeah it was very quick cause like as soon as like you see someone like blow up you're just like oh it, it's gonna happen to me too <laughs> yeah it's gonna happen and then you upload and you have like two views or something. Yeah. You know? Like how does why does this not viral? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so like it's it's again, it's like the irony of it. It's just like mm-hmm. when you come into it with the the intention of like wanting to go viral, then it's probably not going to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That was its own little world too though. Like the whole YouTube cover world. Yeah. It was very oh, much yeah. like a community. Oh yeah. It's pretty 100%. cool. It's, it, it's, it's dope. I love YouTube covers. Yeah. I still watch YouTube yeah, covers. Yeah, to this day. It's just nice. It's just nice. It's like, it's cool to see just musicians like appreciating other musicians. Yeah, it's beautiful. That's how I feel about it. It's so, it's so dope. And you know, like that's how I, f- I found some of the artists like that I listen to today. It's just nice. I even love the TikTok cover world. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. found, I find oh my god I found this kid this morning yeah. I, I was on my way to to the gym to meet Joey and um I, I was just like the it, it, I, where what was I doing oh I, I I was okay so this morning yeah like I, I was texting both of them obsessively because I was like okay these are all the things that I think is wrong with our TikTok account this is what we gotta <laughs> fix and I was like being my little weird obsessive person and uh so i was like scrolling through our tiktok i was like this, this sucks this sucks this yeah. sucks and then yeah. i yeah. remember for like a minute because i have adhd and i do this i i just like i went to the the whatever tab the other one and like was scrolling my for you page and the first thing on it that i saw was this kid who was doing this cut he was he was like singing an original this morning yeah and i remember i just was like infatuated by this kid's voice i was like i, I wish i remembered his name it's funny. This is very off topic, but I just, I, I, I just, I, I just couldn't stop thinking about this kid. I was like, oh my god, he's so talented. But yeah, I love that world. Yeah. It's I, so, it's so cool. I'm gonna speak this into existence right now because, like, when <laughs> when I when we have a studio, I really, really want to do this. I want to start like a YouTube series called like It Came from TikTok, and I just want to have like TikTok musicians, like me and the team, find come and do live sessions. That oh, dude, that would be so fucking dope. I really want to. That, that would be so clean. Yeah. So I'm speaking just that into it. existence just on Music it. Matters episode. Just do it. What is this? This is like 67, 66 Damn, or something. Y'all been doing it. all right. Yeah, you know we out here. We out here. I'm about but, it. Yeah, I'm about but, it. but I'm speaking that into existence. So in three years, when that's the biggest series on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, we here. We out here. Yeah, let's go. Let's Last go. thing I wanted to ask you, man. Yes. Um, what. So if you could have like one message, like one thing that translates through your music, like for example, if there was all the listeners of your music got one thing from you, one message from your artistry, what would you want it to be? Oh shit, that's a big question. Um, I guess in that case, sorry, I'll get you some water after this. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. <laughs> it's a one yeah, thing, a little drop. No, it's all good. Uh, one thing to get um, is that... It's okay to be yourself. It really is. I know it's so mm-hmm. simple, but I mean, the best things are, the best things are simple. It's okay to be yourself because I'm doing it. I'm having a lot of fun. Yeah. And I, I feel like the reason that you're listening to my music, you as in like this hypothetical person, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's probably because you, you think I'm like genuine in some way. Yeah. And so 
it's okay. It's okay to be weird. It's okay to feel like a weirdo, to feel like <laughs> there's some parts of you that is like you might want to hide from other people. Hmm. And that's fine. That's cool. Like everyone has like things to hide and everything has things about themselves they want to improve. But at the end of the day, like you can't erase those parts from you, you know? Like as much as I would not want to be five six, like that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as much as I would not want to be five seven. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we we literally have the mics yeah. stacked on pelican cases right now. I'm sitting on uh, I'm sitting on books right now yeah. to get this. <laughs> you're you're like the very edge of the couch right now. <laughs> I'm tiptoeing. How am I sitting down and tiptoeing? Uh, yeah, like that's that's just all it. It's all it. Like we're all really weird in some way. We're all really unique in some way. And like the cool thing is that we could all the one thing we all have in common is that we can relate to each other in that way. Mm. You don't have to be intimidating. No. You you can be an inviting person. You can be an you can admire somebody else. You can yeah. be open about how much you admire somebody else. Yeah. You don't have to be this intimidating cold person that's no. very unapproachable. Especially in this industry. No. Shout out to everybody in this industry who's open about yeah. themselves and is genuine and inviting. Because this music industry thing is tough. So it is. Like the last thing you'd want is like someone who like doesn't, isn't approachable and all that yeah. stuff. Like we're all, we're all trying to like help each other through this stuff. Be approachable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you, man. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, dude. You so much. That was a great <laughs> conversation. I, I loved it. It went a lot of funny which way directions. It was cool. Got, got a little dark. There was a lot of... <laughs> yeah. That, that, that was a roller coaster. Yeah, like there, that was a roller coaster. There emotions. was like really funny moments and there yeah. was like some really like dark moments yeah. and like valuable moments. <laughs> but I mean, that is, that is the... The mission statement of music matters. It's how can we wrap all these emotions in the lens of music yeah. and a story. But yeah, yeah, dude, that was awesome. I Yo, appreciate you, bro. Thank you for having me, man. Appreciate of course, this. dude. Tell so them, dope. dude. Thank you. Yeah, tell them where they can listen to your stuff. Yeah. They can follow you on Instagram. Your cool. whatever social media yeah, you so have. Where can they find you? Y'all can find me at Raya I R A Y A on Spotify, all the major streaming platforms. Uh, you can find me there. For Instagram, I'm at Araya.music. Again, I R A Y A dot music. Um, I guess like I don't know, Twitter or something, like uh, at Monos for show, M O E K N O W. That was a left turn. Yeah, it was totally different. <laughs> yeah. I I might change that, but like whatever. Like F A S H O. Cool. That's I think that's all. Yeah. Follow me. <laughs> for show. Sure. And then the, those will, those will all be on the screen here. Yes. yes all right, bro. Sure. Appreciate you, man. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. You. Thank you. For all right. Me, Music matters. Uh.